Yo, what's going on, y'all? Welcome in to a brand new episode of Snaps. Now at youtube.com slash snaps CFB underscore. Hey, mm. do the underscore there, but love that we got Snap CFB. Yep. But you can also follow us on TikTok and Instagram, Snap CFB. And not to toot Aaron's horn as if he needs any more confidence. As he I need more. Traipsies through this life, uh, just blessed with good looks and a rocket arm. But mm. Um, mm. yeah, Aaron has done a excellent job of becoming a tech pro. I mean, he's in here mm. running the stream yard production. He just uploaded a YouTube short. Mm. Uh, yeah, also Instagram, tick. So again, snap, made a thumbnail is probably the hardest of made all. Made a them. thumbnail. That's right. He's making thumbnails out here, dude, guys. Dude, last night, little man. He's been watching Hotel Transylvania, whatever. He yeah, pronounced. great movies. Great, great movies. movie. But for some reason, he loves it. But he's had nightmares the past two nights. So he woke up at midnight last night. Nightmare. I go upstairs, mm. you know, lay with him, and then I can't fall back asleep. So uh, I end up watching uh, YouTube videos on how to make a thumbnail along with other videos for about an Hell hour yeah. last night. Hell and yeah. uh, baby steps. Baby steps. I wouldn't go full nerd mode on me yet, but soon your boy's going to be all nerded out when it comes to YouTube. In uh, there, yeah, look, look at my guy in the lab at midnight. My bad, okay, guys, just switch it up. I'm back in the left now. We're getting, we're still getting this thing right. Um, Von Bluesman, info for LSU transfer portal, please. Not a touch. Well, okay, look, I, I think for today's show, it is the opening of the portal. Um, there have been a couple of big names that have hit. Uh, oh, what up, CT? Look at her boy, Chris Tran, in there. Thumbnail looks yeah. fine. There you go, Aaron. Good, shit, yeah. dude. um, uh, so. If you're coming here looking for huge names that have hit the portal, I don't know there's a ton of news therein quite yet. Mm -hmm. uh, now, there is at least one five-star name floating out there that we'll get into, um, but a lot of the best players in the country have already kind of decided and decided in that earlier portion. So I, I feel that the conversation for today will be, okay, let's look at the best teams see what they need, maybe get into a couple of names, but more about, okay, mm -hmm. what are the needs? And then recognize that you're probably not going to fill those needs with a superstar. Mm -mm. Uh, what you're looking for are depth pieces and or um, rotational pieces yep. and things along those lines. You're looking to, to plug holes like the old Dutch cartoon mm -hmm. that we're always referencing. Um, and again, guys, as we are now independent, great free ways you can help us out. Hit the like button, subscribe, um, very easy, and we yeah. love you for it, and share it with your let me, friends. Let me, let me ask you this. I think you brought this up months ago, or I did. One of us did. We, we talked about it briefly, but this is when the you, the craziness of college football in December with, with everything going on, playoffs, portal, recruitment, guys committing, just a million things going on, coaches getting fired, coaches getting hired. Um, do you still – would you still want the portal to be moved to one time in that time being now get rid of December, uh, get rid of December. That's, that's for recruiting. That's for, that's for recruits, high school recruits. Post spring is for portal instead of two. I uh, it's, it's tough to say Aaron, because uh, if you listen to the show, you probably know that I tend to side on um, I tend to land on the side of player empowerment overall. And I think for a player, the December transfer portal window is so massive uh, because you get a full off season with your team, mm -hmm. with your new team. Um, now, I hate what it did to uh, guys like, oh, why am I blanking? Who's Texas backup quarterback? Uh, who got Malik? Yeah, 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 yeah. Malik, what? The, um, whatever. It doesn't matter. You get the point. Bingo Here's card a check, T-Bob, and I forgot it. Yeah, I mean, what are you going to do? It's not like we're a college football show or anything. But it's like, I mean, here's a guy who started multiple games for them, right? Yep. And what was a very good season, was a critical part of that team and then couldn't play with this team in the playoff. Like, that sucks. Uh, but but it's great as a player to be able to get uh, off-season fourth quarter program or mat mm -hmm. drills, whatever version of that. You have an entire spring ball with which to learn install and start to prove yourself to the coaches and to climb up the depth chart. Like It's going to be significantly tougher for spring transfers to have the impact that December transfers will. And I think that's why you saw the majority of the I'm just trying to, clear, just trying to the schedule. Like that's, I'm, I'm, well, I'm just I know. trying to make December a little less crazy. And if, if to well, me, I guess... If I 
And let's not forget this year, there's an expanded playoff. So we're going to have an expanded playoff, 12 teams within at that point, it's not just four teams that are worried about, Hey, we may lose a guy or a guy that, that like Malik has to make a decision. Do I stay on Texas and make a, a national championship run or do I hit the portal? And then yeah. he's left without a backup quarterback. Now you're talking about 12 teams that are going to be put in that situation. I just think it, it, it's a little much for, for everything that's going on. I'm just trying to clean it up a little bit. I think, but I think if you're asking me if I wanted one portal window, it would still be closer to December. I'd maybe if you want to do it in January yeah. or do it right after the season ends, I would, I don't know that I would want the only portal window to be after spring. Although mm -hmm. uh, it would be fascinating if it was like now you had guys like Caleb Downs entering the portal and I, mm -hmm. that just seems like it might be. I don't know. I, I find that the clean break after a season is actually probably best for all parties, right? Yeah. For both the teams themselves and the players for everybody to start anew. So um, I, I, I'm okay if you want to push it to one, but I would still put it a bit um, earlier. Yeah. And I, and I did, I do think, sorry, it, just the whole cleaning up the schedule. Um, if you move the season up a little bit, you know, if you do move the season up into mid August, early August and the season essentially ends at the end of December with a national championship somewhere around there, maybe the, you know, new year's day or something like that. Then you could open the portal up for nice, you know, 14, 21 days in January where kids could still enroll in school, but still complete a season. So I think if, if you wanted to keep that in a similar place, I think you do have to consider maybe moving up the entire season, which I would be all for. Uh, moving up the entire season, moving up um, the entire season instead of starting mm -hmm. the, End of um, end of August, first week of September is generally where you're starting yes, right now. You start second week of August, so you get even more time away from the NFL. You get two or three mm. weeks where it's just college football. So you could do, you know, the whole, you know, f you know, Saturday, Sunday, Monday for a couple weeks if you wanted to to get more primetime games, which I think would be sweet. Uh, and I think at that point too, you and I have talked about discussing ending the conference championship weekend and rolling right in the playoffs, say right around Thanksgiving. And then having the playoffs run through December, be done in December, and then bam, portal opens in, in first week of January. In an ideal world, that sounds great. Feels like a lot of moving parts uh, to get people to agree with. Um, Scott Dice says those games will be hot as fuck in the South. Yeah, I mean, I guess they already are hot as fuck. They already but hot yeah. as fuck. Uh, there was no, one of my favorite things from being a college football player in the South was watching teams um, maybe not even from that area. I mean, even teams in the South would sometimes come down to South Louisiana and be like, what the fuck is this? Mm -hmm. But like, I'll never forget playing App State to open the year and they're warming up in all black mm -hmm. and they didn't even have shoulder pads on and you could tell they were done before the game ever even mm -hmm. started. They're like, what sort of fucking hellscape have we been transferred to? Where are we right now? We can't even breathe. I walk outside and it feels like I'm in a sauna. It's the, uh, it's, it's again, it becomes, it's, it becomes a great advantage the same way. If you're Oregon or maybe not even Oregon as much as USC. Yeah. And let's say you got to go to the big house in November. That's going to be fucking brutal. Yeah. You know, uh, Hesse in the chat, a lot of West coast schools don't start classes until the last week of September. They still play games. I mean, those guys had a huge advantage. Uh, I remember when I was visiting UCLA, that was one of the pitches of like, you could truly be a professional athlete for the first part of the season because there's no classes. It's just football. Uh, you have your camp time and then you'll yeah. get uh, two, three, four games for some schools where it's just practice, film, play a game, no school, that's it. So you gave even more time to, to just focus on football. Uh, Shepard Duck says, T-Bob, it snows here in Oregon and Washington. Okay, again, that's why I caught myself with Oregon, and I said more so USC, because, yes, I imagine Oregon actually does get cold weather that I don't really appreciate, uh, as does Washington. I mean, I hell, I you, you know what the flip side of that is? Uh, I remember one summer, so we spent a whole summer in Louisiana heat building up that, and then we opened on the road in Washington, bruh. It was fucking 55 degrees. You would have thought that we had injected super serum into our mm, veins. I felt like I could I run so a million good. miles an hour. I could never stop. 
Also, coincidentally, one of my favorite settings and stadiums I've ever played in. Yeah. Right there on the water. Great mm -hmm. crowd. You know, not one of the 100,000 behemoths in the SEC, but like a really solid 50 to 60K and just a ton of fun to have your um, first ever uh, first ever start. Uh, and to be clear about this as well, Emil says, t Bob Geography, Oil and Water. Yes, there is not mm. um, a subject that I know less about than geography mm. like Aaron did you know that Minneapolis is north of Toronto that's weird though I, I wouldn't say a lot of people would know that exactly like, it's yes. fucking mind-blowing yeah but I don't think that's like a known fact that if you ask 10 people I think one or two would get that um all right let's uh okay let's think about this and okay let's go ahead and dive in on three had a really good article today uh talking about the top teams top needs in the transfer portal and they looked at the odds and they looked at the teams that had the 10 best um national championship odds and they said okay what do they need and it's interesting to talk about individually mm -hmm. but collectively aaron there is one position yeah. that that really rings true above all mm -hmm. i don't know what exactly has happened but coaches around the country now are asking themselves where have all the big guys gone. Mm -hmm. uh, ooh, what is that? Is that Dixie Chicks? Either way, um, in this article, UGA, Texas, Oregon, FSU, and LSU all said, or by Jesse Simonton, uh, their biggest need was defensive tackle specifically. Yeah. So if you are a big guy and you want to get paid and you're even halfway decent, Okay, there is going to be a very mm -hmm. robust bidding market for your services. Well, and I don't even know if it's just if it's starters, but it's all. It, I think it's mostly just depth, and that, like that's just my opinion. Obviously, you look at Texas, you lose two potential top two round, first round guys, and so yeah, you focus like, okay, why was Texas so good last year? Well, their front seven was tremendous. Their 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 you know front four got after the quarterback and stopped the run. One of the best teams in all of America stopping the run. So like. Yeah, you have to replace those guys. And, I, and, and and Texas has recruited well, and Sark has recruited well. And I'm, I'm sure they got plenty of guys that, that can get in there and play. But do they have the depth? Same thing with Georgia. Same thing with a lot of these schools. And that goes to the whole portal thing. You know, Kirby said it a lot when, when every time I hear him talk about um, certain position groups at Georgia is we just don't have the competitive depth that we yeah. did prior to the portal, which makes sense. Like if I'm a, if I'm a four or five star guy and I'm pretty damn good, I want to be a starter. I don't want to be a rotational guy. I want to be a starter. And this also goes to the fact of, of the way a lot of offenses go nowadays. Uh, offenses are spread you out. Offenses are a lot of up tempo, a lot of no huddle, a lot of snap the ball within 15 seconds. You need to rotate the big boys. They get tired out. Yeah. They're big. They're 350. Yeah. You know, they they can't go Tennessee neck, you know, speed and match that offense and expect not to need breaks there and there. So you need competitive depth at that defensive tackle position. So yeah, I agree. Like everyone's looking to bolster that position group. Yeah. And 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 so that's where it gets interesting, kind of even within these conversations, because while they all need defensive tackles, there are some that are more desperate than others. Like yeah. you're saying, for UGA, it's mainly depth. Whereas a school like LSU needs frontline yeah. immediate help. I think Texas probably needs a yeah. bit of both. I would say they their thumbs a bit heavier on the scale than is for Georgia. I think Oregon's in that mm -hmm. same boat. I'm not exactly as clear on FSU situation, but especially after losing a guy like Braden Fisk, who was probably one of the more underrated players in the entire country last year. Mm -hmm. um, and then just had one of the most athletic combines you've ever seen in your entire life. Like, yeah, they too need him. And, and again, um, that kind of four and five stars not wanting to sit and wanting to play, that is the, uh, remember, every time we talked about the portal, we talked about the kind of two triangles that meet, right? Mm -hmm. Where all the lower end teams, the best players leech upward, but on a lot of these top end rosters, mm -hmm. instead of having nine deep of Alabama guys that would be in the NFL like Nick Saban used to have, yep. those guys kind of go and funnel outwards mm -hmm. uh, to other schools as well. So, there's never been a better time to be a defensive tackle than yeah. right now in this portal. Cause even if you're not that good, you're going to be overvalued and by extension, likely overplayed. Yeah. Overplayed. Yeah. LSU first hundred uh, percent. I do want to get one chat and Zach says not many good tackles in the portal. 
I don't know why on three doesn't have Caden Proctor as a Bama lock, though. He said he was already coming back. I believe he hit the portal and put up the notification of leave me the fuck alone, essentially. Yeah, and he's not, and, and, and I'm guessing that's more of a, um, I, I don't know why they're not projecting him to Alabama. I mean, he was already, at A-Day. Yeah. He was at A-Day. Day. He's on campus. Caden Proctor is absolutely uh And that's someone, too, Alabama. we talked about yesterday with A-Day of Alabama's offensive line looking really good. Yeah. That was without him, too. Like well, and it's interesting because maybe this is a sign of a team that is just used to being so deeper dominant there. But like, according to some Alabama beat reporters, I was reading, they actually still purport that offensive line is something they're shopping for actively in the portal. Well, maybe a, not frontline guys, but backups. yeah. Yeah. Backups. Yes. I, I think, it, I think big people are premium. Let's just be honest. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, it is, it is a sport that puts a premium on giant individuals. It is a physical football game. No matter you – know, you watch Ole Miss and they did a, a, a spring game that was seven-on-seven. Seven. You watch you – know, Which I want to talk was, about that. We'll get to Ole yeah, Miss. We'll get to I think that. that's but a little I, cheeky. I'm just putting it in, in all in general, though. Like It is still a game, no matter how soft or how much the rules favor the offense or whatever it may be, that the great coaches understand that – we need to dominate the line of scrimmage. And let's 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 look at last year's four top the top four teams in, in America. Yeah. Washington won the Joe Moore Award, best mm -hmm. offensive line in America. Texas probably had the premier defensive line in America. Yeah. You know, one of the top you know, rush defenses. Alabama was good on both sides of the offensive line and defensive line. The offensive line, as we alluded to yesterday, got really, really pretty talented towards the end of the season. It was one of the premier ones. And then Michigan for for two, three years, for three years now have been one of the better offensive lines, won it back-to-back -back years, was in contention last year for, to win it for a third year, and had a, a premier defensive line. Georgia, same thing, elite offensive line, but what held them back possibly a little bit last year, the defensive line wasn't as good as it's been, and that has been an emphasis But, but it, is, it, it is funny, it's though, really because good. it's like – they were still like 37th or something, yeah. and I think it was like interior rush rate, which, again, is awful maybe uh, by extension – of where Georgia normally is and has yes. been. But again, we have to remember that all these things are relative. Yeah. LSU fans um, would have murdered someone mm -hmm. to get a certain 37th ranked rush yep. defense uh, last season. But, but once again, just goes to the point of we love throwing the football. We love the big plays. We love the home run shots, but the best coaches and the coaches that are getting to the championship still understand it takes great offensive line play. It takes great defensive line play to get there. Why did Jada Daniels win the Heisman? Yeah. You know? I mean, he had the weapons also, but he like, did, but that's, I mean, yeah. the, the only knock on Jaden Daniels from a draft perspective is his supporting cast was so good that it makes mm -hmm. it tough to judge like how he'll do on a more even playing field yep. when their offensive line isn't significant. Now, granted, you go look at the Alabama film and stuff like that, and you're like, okay, you look pretty damn good in, in, in that game, mm -hmm. but still. Um, uh, I mean, like, still can't believe LSU wasted a national championship caliber offense and highs winner last year. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And it'll, it'll drive you crazy for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jimmy Satterfield, Michigan has to replace all five starters on the offensive line. It gets even worse. Michigan actually lost their <laughs> top lot. six guys. I gotta say, dude, the more we think about Michigan, <laughs> I, I'm just really feeling for Sharon Moore, dude. Mm. Um, so. Mm. And He's gonna be giving three. grace, though. He will be giving grace this season. I don't think Michigan fans are crazy in the sense that they they, they expect the same result next year. This okay. has been building to this moment. The team had been building to the moment. You know, everything was just aligned for Michigan to make a deep run and, and have their best opportunity to win national championship. You're losing way too much talent. So to think that you're going to replace it. I think they're smart enough to know that. I think that is completely level-headed. But, yeah. you know, I do some work with Stadium. Shout out Red Corner, Blue Corner. It's my guy Jake Bud and Josh Perry. And they talk a lot of Big Ten. And when I was filling in on that show the other day, um, Jake thinks Michigan's going to beat Ohio State. Why? Thinks they have the mental edge that basically they are big brother. They're tougher and Ohio <laughs> State is not. Do they have the players though? Because they Bro, had the players I last know. year. No, no. But what I'm telling you is, yes, the more level-headed Michigan fans and and Jake is level-headed. Like, but again, I I, I guess all I'm getting at is. Sharon Moore will be given some grace, but he's not devoid of expectation. And this is such a massive exodus of talent that it's not 
like it's like the climb back is going to be pretty fucking hard. Yeah, like in this I on agree. three article, uh, Michigan for needs, they just basically said the entire offense, yeah. anything they can get offensively. If they can add a quarterback, if they can add a receiver. If they can add offensive linemen, they need it all. And so not only did you lose a ton of coaches, you lost more NFL talent. We'll see after the draft than maybe potentially anyone else ever mm -hmm. uh and you're defending the national championship and your main rival in ohio state if they can figure out their own line problems look potentially stronger than ever it's um yeah look samara howard says go blue it'll be a rock fight game see so i'm saying Aaron, the wolverines mm. they're not they're not going anywhere dude they're believing you, you they're, you're, they're not i i i I'll believe when I see it. Once again, no, like, I, I agree. I, I'm becoming worried for them. I think it's too yes. much to overcome at a certain point. Well, and, and we, listen, we'll get a lot of their, their spring game is this weekend. Uh, we saw Ohio State last weekend. It was very underwhelming offensively. And we, you know, if you missed that, we talked about that yesterday. Maybe some of the reasons why uh, Ohio State's game was not, nothing you, you walk away saying, oh my God, this team is the team that is going to win a national championship. This is a team that's going to break this three game drought against Michigan and be back in the, in the big 10 championship game. So like you weren't, you didn't, I didn't, I didn't walk away watching the game saying that, you know, maybe at the defense the offense still has some kinks to work out. So like Michigan has an opportunity this weekend to, to, to prove it to us that they can win a championship, be the Kings of the castle, you know, top of the mountain, lose all this NFL talent, and then be able to, and a head coach, and then be able to do it again the next year. It's not easy. Yeah, to do. and, and well, unless you, I mean, unless you knows it better than anyone else. I mean, you lay it out like then it feels damn near impossible, right? Yeah. So, like, I want to be clear. I'm not holding Michigan to a championship expectation. I think they should probably finish third or fourth. I think I think it should be tough, even really, to pick Penn State. Excuse me, to pick Michigan over Penn State. Even I think they're fourth right now. Um, this right? year, uh, who Michigan? I mean, that's where I would. That's where I, I would have fourth. them. Uh, but, but, but that's understandable, right? I just don't know though, again, if, if Wolverine fans are going to remain that level headed, but you know what else though? A championship does go a long way towards, uh, like, like again, I, you mentioned LSU on an LSU baseball front, you win mm -hmm. the national championship last year, you start three and 12 this year. If you were not coming off of a natty, they would be calling for Jay Johnson's job. Yeah. So having the Natty be a new coach, Sean Moore is going to get a couple of years to figure this out. But it's just, again, I don't care how good your culture is, what they're being asked to overcome and to compete with Whoa. is is uh, like almost in, uh, theoretically insurmountable. Well, and let's also not forget, this isn't like a team that is – that is built like Alabama, that is built like Georgia, that is yeah. built like uh, Texas or, or some of these other schools that have had consistent top five recruiting classes. Yeah, they, they haven't. They've been somewhere in that 12 to 20 range of of bringing top tier talent. And, and, and they've gotten that those players to uh, exceed what their stars were coming out of high school. No doubt about it. Like they've developed incredibly. But, you know, the one thing we've always talked about with Alabama, at least, is they can they, they reload. There isn't a rebuild it's a reload and you trust that because you know, all the four and five star guys that are on the roster. Do we truly think that, that Michigan can just reload with a bunch of three stars and some four stars with not a bunch of five stars, very well, different it's, personnel. It's, it's, it's tough too, because you're telling me on one hand that Michigan's greatest strength is development, but yeah. they're going to have to go into the transfer portal and plug a bunch of holes. It's like, okay, yeah. well those two, are at odds with one another. So I think it probably takes a couple of years. But look, if Michigan can hit a quarterback, nothing helps on getting you back sooner. That's the big if, though, because, again, we've talked about Michigan's quarterback history in the past, and it's – I mean, J.J. McCarthy might legitimately be yeah. or might have one of the best single seasons, if not the best single season that a Michigan quarterback has and, and it was ever it was had. Super impressive. That's a crazy uh, thing. No, hyper efficient. But yeah, Michigan's never had overwhelming quarterback play. Okay, Which so I think, Michigan needs everything. Well, and I think that's going to be the area that has to take another step. I mean, sure, more offensive guy. It's your team now. You have turned this offense into really a dominant offense, but it's been mostly a running football team. It's been like that for three years. You've had one of the best offense lines in the country. They won the Joe Moore had your Joe Moore Award twice. Um, you've had Blake Corum. You've had Donovan Edwards. You've been able just to to bully teams. If you can't do that, can the quarterbacks that have been in the system 
And part of the reason why you, you promote from within to keep the system similar, can those guys elevate their game? Can they be even better than what J.J. McCarthy was last season? Which is not a high bar. Like you said, it was mostly just what is though. It is though. It is. It is mostly efficient. Yeah, it's a high bar from efficiency though. I don't want. I don't want to like completely throw out what JJ did just because he didn't have volume stats. But like he not only was efficient, but in big moments, JJ McCarthy's been very, very good. Um, JJ McCarthy, Mac Jones. I I don't. I I would say no. Um, I think it was completely different to me. Mac Jones had massive volume numbers and he had the best receiving core we've maybe ever seen on a single college. And I would say skill set are very different. Mac is your true pocket quarterback timing on rhythm, throwing the football JJ far superior athlete. I would say upgrade when it comes to arm strength. Uh, he just doesn't have the volume. You know, I would say you put those two guys anymore. Yeah, we have no volume either. I'm sorry. I get it. That was an awful joke that I just completely uh-huh. ruined your point with. I yeah, apologize. You're good. <laughs> um, I would say if you put those two in a combine situation, JJ would impress more. Mac just has better tape coming out. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, ask Snaps. Y'all think Urban Meyer will get back into college coaching? I don't think so, dude. No. I think I think that boat has sailed. I think, I think Meyer I like probably this. doesn't even want to get back in either. I like this comparison from Emil. JJ reminds me of a more of an Alex Smith at Utah. Yeah. I kind of like that. Um, I would agree. And look, Alex Smith became a very good mm-hmm. NFL player. Um, and I could see, yeah, that, that would be the comp. That's a good comp as we, as we are in comp season since draft season. All right. So Michigan kind of needs everything. Ohio State just needs a tackle. Uh, they need, they need offensive, offensive line, line help. Uh, yeah. But it's specifically kind of zeroing in on right tackle, which is why I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm sure they would have loved nothing more than to get Caden Proctor, but yeah. they got to add bodies. They got to get some help there. That is because look, nobody really went and grabbed the job by the throat quarterback wise. Mm-hmm. And so if you're already having question marks about your quarterback, no position group has a great, or I don't know. I'd ask you what has a bigger impact on trying to become a great quarterback, having a really good offensive line or having the great weapons that Ohio state. Like I give you one choice. You either get like LSU's O line to play behind, but okay. Yeah. Receivers, or you get an okay. O line with Ohio state receivers. Hmm. I mean, I, I, I put more of an emphasis on, on, on offensive line. Really? Because, because, because at least it gives you the ability. If you have that elite offensive line, it gives you the ability, especially if you look at Ohio state to run the football. And, and as, as a quarterback, yeah, there's nothing better than being going against a defense that has to put an extra defender in the box to match up with the run game. And you get one-on-ones on the outside. If you have an, an average offensive line and you can't move bodies, you can't run the football and a team can just play six in the box and play cover two. I don't care how good your receivers are. That is not the situation you want to be in as a quarterback. So I would rather have some freaking maulers up front that can move bodies, protect, Give me some one on ones. And if you're a good enough quarterback, you'll take advantage of enough one on ones during a football game. Yeah. And Emil's on fire today because I really like this take as well. He mentions Chip Kelly's philosophy, uh, which is ultimately built on running the ball first in a lot of ways. And yep. that, yeah, a better O line would be a better way. Yeah, to that, that is the concern for that. Me. You're going to have uh, top five defense in America. We're talking about Ohio State here. You're going to have the best running back tandem in America. Um, you're going to have elite receiving play as always. They just they're loaded there. I mean, Jeremiah and, Smith is apparently yeah. everything he was hyped up to be, and then some. Mm-hmm. We talked about it the other day. Got the black stripe taken off his helmet faster than any freshman in Ohio State Buckeye history. So you defense elite, uh, receivers elite, running backs elite. I think quarterback will be as good or maybe slightly better than it was last year. You know, like I, I don't think so it, interesting for all the hand wringing over Kyle McCord yeah. that you could have run him out of town and then wow. end up worse at that position. I don't think it's going to be worse. I would say as good, if maybe a, a slightly better, I wouldn't say okay. worse, which I think, you know, Kyle played fine last year. It was an elite. Um, it was, I think the biggest issue last year was still the offensive line for, for Ohio state. So yeah. But the good thing is, you know, your one loss to, you know, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm not including the bowl game with, all the uh, the the mass exodus they had at certain positions, but you know if, if you have better offensive line play, you have a better shot at being Michigan last year. 
Uh, I do agree with Joey and Zach in the chat here. I, I, I think by the end of the year, Jam Miller and Justice Haynes could maybe give that Ohio State running back tandem could, a, um, we don't know. A, a run. Yeah, 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 for sure. We don't know. For sure. We don't know. They don't they don't have the uh maybe the accomplishments yet of a uh Trayvon Henderson and Quinchon Judkins, but that's Jam and Justice gonna be pretty damn pretty damn strong. Well, great naming, great name but, too. But but the difference once again for those two is their offense line is significantly better than yeah you know yeah yeah they yeah, 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 so yeah, 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 exactly. gonna be they may end up being Christmas. like that um and plus you throw in Alabama and and you know Jalen's ability to run the football adds another dynamic if they do incorporate a little bit more zone read which may give those guys you know some more some more rushing lanes as well so yeah you we we may turn around at the end of the season and say wow look at Alabama's rushing attack which I think we we expect to be there and Ohio State may have the studs, but if you can't block for them, it doesn't really matter. One thing for Ohio State is, you know, you are going against that Ohio State defense, and yep. not a lot of defenses are going to look that good either. Now, they will in the championship game, so I'm not saying it's not relevant, but the O-line probably will look much better against the majority of the Big Ten yep. uh, than maybe it did even in the spring game where – you going after some dogs. Uh, Alabama's needs in the Purtle, Aaron, uh, it's quite simply the secondary. I yeah. mentioned there are some thoughts of adding depth pieces to the O-line, um, but, I mean, it's yeah. it's rare that you see what Alabama just had where you just lost uh, an entire secondary worth of NFL players. Yeah. Um, now, to your point about Michigan, it is the inverse of what the Wolverines have where – Okay, you lost a whole group of NFL guys, but that happens almost every year. And you know what you do? You replace them with another group of NFL guys nearly every single year. The only thing that would maybe give me a bit of pause is that you're also losing Nick Saban. And that yeah. is his position group. And he is a defensive back whisperer. He knows how to get the most out of that position. Can you carry that forward post Saban? Um, but again, it's not the worst weakness maybe to have because I mean, think about the, think about the contenders in the SEC. Who has the great weapons to be able to take advantage of it? Now it's why you beat Georgia last year. Yep. Like, does Georgia have the weapons to take advantage of a of an Alabama secondary that's going to take a step back? Well, I think there's there's two concerns, and I and 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 I would say they're they're the skill positions on both sides of the football. You know, let's not just throw out the fact that Alabama has not had elite receiving play for a couple of years now. I yeah, mean, that's true. Like, like I, I love the offensive line. I, I you know, we we hope Jalen is 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 an improved thrower for this season. Oop, we like the running back play, but if Jalen is going to be a, a better thrower this year, part of part of it's going to have to be we're going to see we're going to need better receiving uh, output. Yeah, and like, they just they even had that. So, you know, you, you lose one of your top guys to to Texas, um, Isaiah Bond. You you bring in a couple of guys. I think guy from Washington. Oh, from Isaiah State. Bond left for Texas. Yeah. I do not remember that. Yes, Isaiah. Oh, Bond's that ain't gone. good. Damn. Jermaine Burns gone. Um, you know, I like Kobe. I like a couple of the pieces they have. But I'm just saying, like they they don't have a lot of proven elite talent on the outside for receivers, and then they got to replace some guys in the secondary as well. So. That is, um, they're good up front, offensive line, front seven. I would say, you know, they 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 they've been deep at the defensive tackle and defensive end position. It's the perimeter play for Alabama this year that could bite them in the butt. Yeah, speaking of um, Jeremiah Smith up there, at Ohio State, uh, Ryan Williams, the two-time Alabama Mister Football, going to be a true freshman weapon that is probably going to need to be uh, relied upon, or if Alabama is going to reach their full potential, he needs to be somebody who's contributing uh, immediately. Greg Hendricks says, T-Bob, what else you ever get their, get their defense figured out? Um, over time, right? Uh, I believe in the coaching changes that are made. Even if you don't believe that Blake Baker is a $2.5 million coordinator, which is mm -hmm. a fair argument, um, again, he gets that because you had to pry him out of another spot. Uh, he does have a good resume. Uh, but then you look at a guy like Bo Davis on the D-line. Like, that's a unqualified success there of a hire. Mm -hmm. Um, you hear great uh, Corey Raymond. So he did. So over time they will get it fixed. It's just, I, I, this, this year just needs to be a step forward. You are not going to have one of the top defenses in the country. Yeah. Um, this season, it's, 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 it's going to take a couple of years to get it back to where it, uh, it, it, it used to be. Um, let's go to a meal in the chat. Ask snaps is game Proctor scenario with, 
Iowa Bama, something that could be an emerging trend or more of a one-off where a portal entrant commits to one school, reneges after a semester and goes back. I think this is something that will be addressed pretty soon. I would say like as, as things start to clamping up about what college football looks like going forward, I think there's going to be some, some heavy um, rulings on, on how often you can transfer when you can transfer all that, how many times all that. So I just, I think that's the, you, if you, if you open that can of worms and allow it to keep happening, it gets way too messy. Uh, yeah. I mean, again, it's, it's just such a weird thing where everybody agrees. It's kind of fucked up. Um, or even, even if you don't, cause like, again, I don't think it's, I'm like, kind of like, fuck it, whatever. I kind of love the madness of it, but most people is the, the, the I would say the, the democratic consensus is that it's pretty fucked up, right? Yeah. But again, there are just so many legal hurdles. Like, okay, for instance, uh, okay, so a five-star uh, safety, former five-star at a high school, Jacoby Matthews, played 20 mm -hmm. games at AM over the last couple of years. He just enters the transfer portal. Uh, he cannot transfer within the SEC. Mm -hmm. But I wonder, like, what if he challenged that in a federal court? The same way that players that's did not a, that's not an NCAA ruling. That's not an NCAA ruling. I think that's an SEC ruling. But why would the SEC have any more power over his eligibility than would the NCAA? Unless you're telling me that SEC coaches are just going to handshake agree that okay, well, we're not going to get him regardless. I think I think it's, I think it's more of a. All. I think I think at that point, because there's not a lot of universities that that are willing to back the NCAA. I do think that all the SEC schools are kind of in agreement that this is a ruling that we all agree upon and want. And that, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to come at the sec, you're coming against all the schools. And at so, that point, then that, then these schools are like, no, like, sorry, like we don't want you because we, we, we agree with this ruling. Like we're all staying behind it. So that could be the case again, in an honor among Steve sort of deal. Yes. But if, if, if Jacoby Matthews, he's not going to, by the way, he's looking at Oregon and FSU. Yep. Um, who is recruited highly by in high school. And by the way, this is just a second, this is just a second portal window, not the first, just a second. And, uh, Evan Stewart. Yeah. Just a second. Yeah. On the sec front. And, uh, Evan Stewart already made his way to Eugene from Texas A&M, mm -hmm. the five-star wide receiver. So I'm sure that he's been in contact with him. So I don't think Jacoby Matthews is going to press this. I'm just pointing out that, like, if somebody wanted to challenge this legally, I wonder if they could the same way that every NCAA rule has been struck down when it's hit uh, federal court. Yeah. Um, okay, so Ohio State needs a line. Alabama needs secondary. Uh, Ole Miss needs a running back, right? If Ole Miss is yeah. looking to fill any additional holes, losing Quinchon Junkins, you maybe haven't replaced him um, – as well as you would hope you did get Logan Diggs from LSU, who's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, a name to watch out for, Penny Boone. Uh, I don't know that he's being linked to Ole Miss, but if you just go look at the top available transfer portal players right now, um, Boone is one of the few uncommitted guys. Uh, and he's got kind of an interesting story. He was the 23 Mac Offensive Player of the Year, rushed for over 1,400 yards, 15 touchdowns at Toledo. Um, and he originally, I can't remember, he was originally somewhere, transfers to Toledo, took off. Transferred to Louisville in the first portal window, decided he's not into it, and just hit the portal again. Mm -hmm. So Ole Miss needs a running back, kind of the final piece that Lane Kiffin needs to complete this roster top to bottom. Um, I would be surprised if they don't uh, go pursue Penny Boone. Well, and, and you know, they did a good job, obviously, getting some, some very talented guys in the portal on the defense side of the football. They got a yeah. top receiver as well. But same thing as we talked about these other schools. They got uh, Walter Nolan, the defensive yeah. tackle that everybody was after. Do they have the depth though? Or are they just you know front line guys? I think that's 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 a question everyone's gonna have to answer. I mean, once the, this goes back to what we talked about earlier. Yeah, it looks good on paper. We got this guy and this guy and this guy, but it's not like Ole Miss has been more like Alabama or Georgia, where they already have a stockpile of elite talent and they, on the. The offensive line, defensive line, and that and the offensive line is an area that you know I brought up to you last year when I watched Ole Miss go against Bama and maybe some of the other teams, you know, with good defense line play, they they crumbled. Yeah, that's what held they, them they back. Couldn't handle up. No, that's what held them back. A hundred percent. And I don't so, know that they've really gotten that much better in that regard. Mm -hmm. No. Um. So that's actually a really good point. Like for as much kind of doom and gloom as we were just. uh foreshadowing for the Ohio State offensive line, I would say the old Miss offensive line is worse. Yeah. Um, and so uh, 
may again, but I don't, I also don't think you're really going to find anybody in the portal. That's going to change that, uh, significantly. How do you feel about Ole Miss doing the skills competition and not having an actual spring game? Are they bitch made? I think it depends on, did they have the depth to do it? I mean, did you get enough? And also, did you get enough out of spring? I mean, if you're a coach and you can you can put you can rest your head at night saying, for 14 practices, and say they did three scrimmages, my team busted their ass. It mm-hmm. was successful. the The areas of competition that I needed to see compete were answered for me. Guys stepped up. Guys were physical during those 14 days. Then I'm fine with it. And that's something that you as a coach have to answer for yourself. Uh, and everyone's different. So I, I I don't know. I mean, I'd have to sit down and ask Lane himself, like, do you did you feel like you got enough out of those other 14 practices where you just wanted to kind of have the mentality of, I just want to stay healthy at this point. Questions were answered that I needed to get answered. We're healthy. And I don't want anything crazy to happen in a spring game. Let's just be done with it. So I wonder if it's kind of the first sign of bigger changes in spring games because so many of these things start to feel like, Almost like go through the motions of fairs, but I, I guess that's not entirely like almost. I someone yeah, did that's, last not, year. that's not entirely fair though, because to be because I mean, like Brian Kelly was very clear about no, I, I told the guys, like, we are treating this like a game, like, yeah, there's crap people in the stands, like, I want to see, yes, we're running a limited uh, menu and everything, but like, I want to see who's going to show up situationally, who's going to make plays when it's third and four. Is the quarterback going to convert or is it even going to come over the big stop? So, like, yeah. I guess I don't want to go too uh, fear mongering on the death of the spring game front. But I do remember uh, last year, though, when I was getting ready for the LSU spring game, when I was on the call for it, leading up to it, there were some questions about health. And and I don't know if these rumors were ever true or not. I don't know how it got to, to my, 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 my production team. But the rumors were getting to us that, that Brian Kelly was thinking about having – essentially a combine because of the lack of depth at certain positions mm. heading into the game. And, and that didn't happen. They ended up playing a game and it was, it was, it was fun, but I don't know. I I'm with you. Like I would still rather there's fans in the stands. You know, if you're going to be playing young talent, freshmen, mid years, guys who redshirted last year that didn't get playing time. I want to see what they look like in, in, in a more game like situation when there's 20,000 to 60,000 fans more than yeah. maybe they've ever played in front of, yeah. I want to see it can, how do they handle it? I it's agree. Great gauge. Um, Maroney Lane music. How would you, how would you have snaps? How would you run the snap spring game? I'd probably run it like how you saw a lot of these coaches run it. You know, you have yeah. a little bit of offensive normal or a little bit of normal team practice at first, uh, get a clock, move the ball. Um, running clock in the second half. Yeah. Running clock in the second half. I was, I w- how many uh, how many plays did I mean Beck ended up playing a ton, huh? Like Beck they played did a, the whole game besides one possession. He yeah, they threw, did. He threw it about fifty times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a bit surprising to me, right? Yeah. I I, I kind of if I had like a known quarterback or known starters, I would feel pretty comfortable maybe giving them like one or two series, almost like an NFL preseason game, and then I would just have the young guys go at it. You know, or anybody who's fighting for a job, anybody who is not yeah. solidified. But if I had an upperclassman like a Carson Beck, now granted, quarterbacks don't ever get hit because oh, he got know. rolled up on. Oh, what? Oh, he got rolled up on. It was pretty. It was. It, it, it looked nasty for a split second. Tate Rattler oh, no. back, oh, rolled no. right into Carson. He Carson bent, oh, no. and you could a pin dropped, and you saw Kirby like run up there. Like <laughs> I was like, oh god. Oh, were you freaking out? Uh, for Georgia not having any experience behind Carson Beck, uh, that would have not been good. Who is going to be the two? UGA. Yeah, Brad Bush. That that uh that roll up scared the shit out of me. I think it scared the shit out of everyone. Watching. Can you okay? Let's 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 use our words literally here for a second. Can you imagine if literally everyone in the stadium just shit themselves? Mm. They got so scared that all at once, all of Sanford Stadium just shit in their pants. Mm-hmm. Um, it just means more. It just means gonna more. It just means more. Speaking of using your Gunner words Gunnar Stockton will be the backup, by the way. Gunner okay, Stockton. Gunnar Stockton will? Yep. Uh, speaking of using your words correctly, I kind of fucked up on off the bench this morning, Aaron. Mm-hmm. Um, I once again put my genitals on the line for a bet. 
this Uh-oh. time it was that LSU would not finish last in the SEC for baseball. I, they're not going to. I'm not worried about it. Uh, but I later accused Tim Tebow of castrating little kids. And everybody's looking at me like I'm crazy. And I'm like, no, come on. I'm like, nobody fucking remembers. What? It was circumcising. Mm. He didn't castrate kids. Did he really circumcise? It's, it's actually, you know, look, I'm being a cynical asshole. But yes, do, doing mission work. He went to some other privileged areas and they helped out with a variety of things, including like cleft lips. But yes, yeah. castrating, not castrating, circumcising kids was on the docket. But Oof. for a little bit yeah. this morning, I did um, accidentally uh, accuse Tim Tebow of castrating villages of small underprivileged children, Yeah, uh, which he did not do, which he did not do. To be fair, um, <laughs> Daniel Basham, Tebow were offering up his generals like you got a stockpile of them. <laughs> True. True. Uh, I guess they don't work, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, the balls don't. Yeah, the know? balls don't. But I mean, they still do, though, right? It's I don't know. Yeah, I I I, so. I I thought previous sec to me that maybe just nothing would come out anymore. Just blanks. Yeah, just complete blanks. So that's not true. I don't know. The science is crazy. Very interesting. Snip that vast deferent. I mean, um, save a lot of towels if it was like that. That'd be nice. Ooh, I'm trying to think about how degenerate I want to go here. So you finish in a towel? No, I'm just saying clean up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you know, I'm just <laughs> I'm just a big belly guy. Dude. Is that wrong? Just nut on your belly and then wipe it off. You still have to use a towel to wipe it off. I'm yeah, saying- normally it's like toilet oh, paper, maybe hop in the yeah. shower or something. Yeah. But yeah, I just I mean, the belly's there for a reason, right? A hairy belly just just sounds like a lot of wiping. <laughs> i guess it can, it's, i mean it's just like a moisturizer or something uh, you know don't use it okay never mind ladies. it looks like you it looks like pregnant. chat is uh it looks like maybe i'm a little off base with the towel uh, stuff i thought everybody else was gonna be on board maybe not. <laughs> maybe not it's like that old uh tom segura and brett kirshner clip where they're talking about how like you know how like you do something that you don't think is weird until you tell somebody else and you realize how weird it is. Yeah, and it turns out the just see eating, up, like just basking, <laughs> <laughs> Bert's no, eating like lotion, uh, just lotion drinking all the hairy chest and belly. Uh, okay, not that you, I mean, come on, chest maybe every now and then, bro. I mean, what? what uh, I, <laughs> I mean, the Kegels work. Don't get me wrong here. Um, uh, <laughs> I'll, I, you know what? I have more here, but I'm going to save it for a day. I don't want y'all to think I'm too weird, too fast here. Um, yes, uh, Abo, I do. And I don't see it. Bert Kirscher. Sorry, I can't remember his name. My bad. Uh, Bert Crystal. Yeah. No, look, guys, I do. Okay, whatever. Get out of here. I don't think it's weird. I think it's normal. It's 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 right there. It's situated right there for a reason. <sighs> oh, cramping. Um. <sighs> Penn State needs a receiver. <laughs> uh, Keandre Lambert Smith, Penn State's leading 2023 uh, wide receiver. Oh, we're back to football. Okay. Has Thank hit you. the portal. Um, and Aaron, uh, I am not an expert, but I would say anytime your biggest need as a team is to increase offensively, especially in the passing mm-hmm. game, losing your senior. Top returning receiver after spring Probably is not ideal, especially when it is now three scholarship wide receivers from last year's team that have left the Nittany Lions in this offseason. Not liking the new OC and the new offense, I guess. Um, yeah, that's that's a problem. That is a problem. Uh, what has Penn State been? Penn State's had good defenses. Penn State's had uh, good running backs. They got great running backs returning next year uh, for their third season. Uh, you expect, at least I personally expect, Drew, Drew Alar to to take a step forward next year. Um, but if you haven't got anyone to throw to, I know they got Julian Fleming in the portal from from Ohio State. Grad transfer, though. I mean, yeah, yeah. buried in a room, but like it's you yeah. Know. You never know. So yeah, that's that's. But are we truly expect? Am I get? I get, we brought it up earlier. Like we are expecting Penn State to possibly overtake Michigan this year. You know, so can they? Can, if they take, can they overtake? Oregon too. Can they be the number two team in the Big Ten? If you're the number two team in the Big Ten, we said it. The the the, the expanded playoffs. Penn State was one of the bigger winners when when it, when when it got to twelve. I think 
I would, if I was a Penn State fan, I would be absolutely expecting to finish ahead of Oregon. You know, if I was a Penn State fan, I would be like, hold up now. The only mm-hmm. games we've lost the last two years have been to Ohio State and Michigan. Yep. And now we should be better than Michigan. They've taken a major back. There's no way that we should let the Oregon fucking Ducks from out West come into our conference mm. uh, and from the Pac-12 and immediately pass us up. Now, outside looking in, I think Oregon's going to do that. That's my T-Bob opinion. I agree. I but think most I people Penn, do. But if uh, again, but I don't think that Penn State fans should feel that. I completely understand if they're feeling, no, 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 no. Yes. We'll take we'll take Ohio State being better than us, but we should be better than everybody else. Penn in this State conference. fans have also thought they, they, they should have split the series, the games between Michigan and Ohio State for the past three years probably too. You know, yeah, they, they don't know where their ceiling is. And um, I don't know. Do they play? Do they play Oregon this year? I, I, I'm with you. I think most people that are that are you're not Nittany line fans would have them three heading into the season. But we said this yesterday too. SEC Big Ten. We expect three teams from each conference to be in the playoffs. Yeah, at least. And then one will likely get four in. Yes, I would imagine. One, one may get four in. Um Bull Mulnary, that's bold. Do you have the Ducks are going to smash the Lions? Look, I, I again, I agree. I think Oregon feels like the better team right now. Um, a better quarterback situation, a more wide open offense. I mean, let's be clear. I better coach, possibly. James, James Franklin is just he cannot wait to fuck another OC. He just mm-hmm. does it every single year. Uh, mm-hmm. but maybe this is Come the year where they finally let him go. Yeah, <laughs> or he's going to Superman that OC, mm-hmm. if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, right on the back, and then throw a towel. I, they do not play Oregon. Penn State does not. They will get Washington at home November 9th, and they will go to USC October 12th. But okay. they avoid Oregon, so that's big. That's really big for them. They, they when do they play they, Ohio State? They play Ohio State uh um, at home. November they, 2nd at home. at home. Yeah. They don't play Michigan. They don't play Michigan. Okay, yeah. Oh. Penn State's got to be thinking they finish second. Dude, dude what a what a schedule. Penn have State's got I, I have not really looked at it till now, right now either. Like Holy Penn State's smoke. gotta be gotta be thinking they finish second in the Big Ten. West Virginia, Bowling Green, Kent State, Illinois, UCLA, USC, Wisconsin, Ohio State, Washington, Purdue, Minnesota, Maryland. Ooh. Royal Payne, this, how this is, is easy as it gets? Wisconsin looking in year two for fickle. I don't know, man. Wisconsin's kind of just I mean, they hired Alex Grinch to be co DC. Which is <laughs> mind boggling. Um, as they continue to to try and run a spread offense with a bunch of white boys. Yeah, I don't I I, I don't feel great about Wisconsin. Like there I, I don't know where there's been any major pickup. Um who's their quarterback again? Uh Mordecai again this year? Yeah, I think it's probably still Tanner Mordecai, right? Like, have we heard anything from that? Like I, I think Luke Fickle's a guy that over time will build Wisconsin back. I think he's struggling maybe to be the guy that can flip them. And also, look, I think Wisconsin kind of suffers a bit from some new big dogs entering the conference Mm -hmm. Um, because now Mm -hmm. some of the oxygen that they were sucking up, uh, like Oregon's coming up and taking a lot of that. USC sucks right now, but maybe USC gets good. And then they, 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 uh, they, them as well. So yeah, it's a tough time. Like, Luke Fickle waited so long to finally make the move. And you could argue that he almost couldn't have timed it worse no. with where Wisconsin was at to where Michigan was now at. Remember when Wisconsin was really good, Michigan tended to be down. Um, and now they're back. Penn State's good. Oh, so never mind. They got, they, got, they got your boy. Uh, I just look at the ring. I totally forgot. They got uh, uh, Tyler Van Dyke. Potentially exciting. Yeah, yeah, that's an upgrade. Sure. That's an upgrade. That's an upgrade it's over an upgrade. Tanner Mordecai. It is yeah. an upgrade. So if no, yeah. I'm not saying it's great, but that is an upgrade. So good, good on Luke Fickle, Wisconsin. Yeah. I apologize we didn't know that off the. Uh, yeah, I off totally forgot about that one. Um, Bo Sickle still would rather talk about T Bob's wet stomach than Wisconsin football. <laughs> uh, Greg Hendricks, you sell the Nebraska bandwagon absolutely. Okay, eight wins, baby. Eight wins guaranteed this year. Uh, yes, the wins and losses, and in fact, the one score wins and losses were no different than last year, but if you zoomed in, you could see a different team. 
a more competent team, a tougher team, a more culture team. They just turned the ball over 31 times, more than mm -hmm. anybody in the entire country. Rayola doesn't even have to be great or anything out the shoot. He just has to be better than what you had it last year. Me he though. will be. You're, you're putting all your eggs in, in the basket of a freshman quarterback to uh, – Oh, oh, oh to you, you know what that sounds hey. like? You know what that sounds like? Hmm. What do they call it? Um, when you're a little salty about maybe being left at the altar – Oh, you go back milk, to this crap. Spoiled milk. Yeah, what? It's just like when it's just like when we had Brooks Austin on here. And although I'm sure if we check the tape, he's sitting there sucking uh Rayola's uh wet stomach the entire time. <laughs> and then the second he decommits, he's like, Oh, this Pagula guy, he's got a rocket arm. Rayola doesn't really have the rocket arm. I'm like, get the hell out of here, Brooks. I don't I don't believe that for a second, dude. Sour grapes. Mm -hmm. So I was looking for a lot of sour grapes, sour grapes. Yeah, you just don't want to see Rayola succeed because he because he bailed on UGA. I'm fine with him succeeding. Mm -hmm. I like him. I think he's a stud. Uh, I think he's a chance. I'm just saying, like that's yeah. Why did expect this massive did massive step? play one snap? Why didn't Paglisi play one snap at G? He's hurt, bitch. Um, <laughs> we expect this massive <laughs> jump from Nebraska, and it's a freshman quarterback. So it, it, this may be a uh, uh, year three. For, for Nebraska, more than a year two, we no, see no, 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 because Matt Rule is a master of year twos. First off, um, secondly, it's not a massive jump, it's a couple scores, it's not turning the ball over more than anyone in the country. That should not be hard. Uh, Bo says, and T Bob only wants him to succeed because he left UGA. Well, I'm not denying that wouldn't make it a little extra sweet, mm -hmm. but no, I mainly want him to succeed because I'm a Nebraska believer and I want Nebraska to do well. I, I feel like about Nebraska, the way Aaron does about Texas. Okay. When Nebraska is good and relevant, I think all of college football Agreed. is better is because mm -hmm. I'm old. Maybe so, but that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. And that will probably be today's show. Do it tomorrow. We're going to great. We're going live tomorrow. Not Thursday. Yeah. We'll be live Greg, at noon tomorrow, noon central, one Eastern, same time. Greg, Greg McElroy are going to be joining us. Talk a little, a little more Alabama situation, little college football overall. So, um, send Maybe your questions. A little draft, a little quarterback yeah. evaluation with him Amazing. as well. Um, what happened to Super Chats, this, Dobby? This uh, we, I think, I think we need. Sorry, my bad, Aaron. I think we need to. Um, uh, if Super Chats are not open, we'll look into it in our settings. Also, I think we need to attach a bank account, maybe. Probably. Hey, just check this out, Aaron. Now, Super Chats will actually go to us. Yes. How about that? They can be plugged immediately back into paying for the people that we now have uh, doing our social clips. So, hell yeah, yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Help us keep the show going. As yeah, we maybe we'll ask. Home. Should we ask Greg where he comes? Yeah. First question. <laughs> every every person needs to answer the question. <laughs> I uh, McElroy feels like probably one of the last people that I would ask that to. Yeah. I don't, uh, all fair would be cool about it, but the big time ESP and guy, I feel like, you know, the, the big time mainstream guys sometimes are a little wary of, uh, engaging in just in such shenanigans. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> uh, I love y'all. Y'all are crazy. All right. Uh, go ahead and hit the like button. Share with your friends, guys. Um, we should, it's pretty soon here too. We should have uh broken out segments being put up on um on the page as well as the lives. Uh Aaron's already uploaded a YouTube short, as okay. we discussed, not to brag. And if you are on podcasts, Apple, Spotify, uh, I think our numbers are probably gonna take a pretty big hit there because we were getting a lot of juice from being on the main volume feed. So a way to help rate it, review it, share it with your friends, or just come over here and hang us out with us at youtube.com slash snaps CFB underscore one like equals one T Bob belly load. Come on. What? I guys, oh. I mean, come on. I, I can't do that. I can't do that. I, can't, I don't think I can keep up with that demand. Maybe every 20 likes potentially um god that would that would take forever mm -hmm. all right love y'all see, see you tomorrow. tomorrow more snaps later guys